no, not again. Hello everybody and welcome back to my next instalment of my Doctor Who Marathon Rap Review. If you're interested in watching the whole of the classic series and my thoughts and opinions on every single episode of the classic series, why am I doing it like this? There's a link up to them in the corner right now. Uh, this is going to be my review of the wilderness years. This is just going to be my review of Dimensions in Time and the movie. One of which is considered canon, one isn't by most fans I think. Uh, so I'm just going to get started on Dimensions in Time. Um, Hartle and Charlton's faces at the start whizzing around looked crap, I must say. Obviously, Tom Baker is going to get stuck in the sodding time vortex again. Greetings, greetings. Well, I seem to be stuck in the sodding time vortex again. And the idea of the Doctor and Ace sort of transforming from one Doctor to another and from one companion to another sort of worked for the Doctor. But for Ace, why would Ace just transform into Leela or into whoever else was in it. And at one point it even turns into two companions. How did Ace turn into two people? But the whole idea of it merging with EastEnders was such a bad idea. I don't know why. I, I don't even know how it got past the scripts, to be honest. The Fifth Doctor's costume was very bad. It was so inaccurate. You had, instead of a stick of celery, you had a bit of wheat. His jumper was like, it had black lines on it instead of red. I suppose to the untrained eye, it's not much different. I don't quite get how they had the budget to have a helicopter in it, but they didn't have the budget to have a decent script. It's bloody stupid. The only reason I wanted to mention Dimensions in Time in this sort of marathon is because it's the one and only time where Colin Baker comes into contact with the Brigadier. So that's sort of something to cherish, I think, especially on screen. So I consider it a dream. It's sort of canon, it sort of isn't. It's just a dream. And then we have Doctor Who, or Doctor Who the movie, or the Doctor Who TV movie, or the movie, or The Enemy Within. It's not made completely clear about what the film's actually called. I've just titled it on this as The Movie. First off, it's the smallest thing, but why would the Daleks hold a trial for the Master? Surely they're just exterminating the, the Daleks. I love the opening titles. It's clear that this is where Rusty Davis's titles got their inspiration from. I love the TARDIS, both inside and out. The uh, the exterior TARDIS is looks very similar to the 80s prop, but with a few slight differences, and I really like that. The inside TARDIS, I like. I don't like the sort of room because it's not got any roundels in it, and I like the roundels. But I love the console, and this is obviously the first time the console went to the ceiling. The soundtrack was fucking fantastic. I hate Sylvester McCoy's costume in this. Why can't? Why didn't they just keep it as it was? I'm surprised Sylvester McCoy actually agreed to come back, to be honest. I think he's recently said that it's because the money was good, but I don't know where they got the idea from that the master was a snake. It looked awful. I mean, I can get past the eyes, because maybe that could be a mutation of what happened in survival, that sort of thing. But the snake, no, it's stupid. The end for the seventh Doctor was awful. This was the Doctor that was in Remembrance of the Daleks, survival, and others. And he got killed off by a group of, I mean, why didn't he even check the scanner, actually? Surely he'd have checked the scanner before he left the TARDIS. Um, but as soon as he got out, he just got shot down by a gang and then he gets taken to an operating theatre. The surgeons don't even listen to him when he's saying he's not human. Surely when they saw a double exposure on an x-ray, or a double exposure on an, on an x-ray, and then he's saying he's not human, why would you carry on operating on him? Surely you'd have a little bit of doubt. Then again, I'm not a surgeon, so I wouldn't know. The Doctor's regeneration should never, ever be compared to Frankenstein. If it was the Master, fair enough, because that sort of works because of the Master's persona. But the Doctor, no. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. The CGI was... I, I wrote down that it was great, but I mean, looking at things like the Snake Master, that didn't look that good. I meant more like the morph that was... Um, that was implemented between Sylvester McCoy and Paul McGann. 
that face morph, it looked really good. I didn't like all the romantic shit between the Doctor and Grace. I put that down to the fact that the Doctor's only just regenerated and he's still having a post-regeneration crisis. Fuck off. The Doctor is not half human. I don't know why they decided to do that. It's the worst idea. I mean, it didn't even have an impact on the story, the fact that he was half, it, that he's only half human. If he was fully Time Lord, he still wouldn't have been able to open the Eye of Harmony. And that's another thing, the Eye of Harmony. Why did they shove the Eye of Harmony inside the TARDIS when it's been clearly stated in the Deadly Assassin that the Eye of Harmony is on Gallifrey? They don't think about, whoever wrote the script for this didn't think about what they were actually writing. I'm not entirely sure what the Master's plan was. I think he was trying to destroy the Earth, but I'm pretty sure the Master doesn't just destroy things just the hell of it. That, the Master for me is more, he wants to survive. He wants to have more life and he wants to have more power. So I'm not quite sure what he was actually trying to do. Um, and the, port the portrayal of the Master was just really bad for Merritt Roberts. I'm not saying his performance was bad, that's a completely different thing. His performance was good, but it's just the portrayal of his character that wasn't good. The Master shouldn't be the way he was in that, and that's not down to Eric Roberts, that's down to the story and the script, and it just wasn't very good. Anyway, that's the wilderness, you guys, it was shit altogether. <laughs> Plain and simple. It's such a shame though that Paul McGann didn't really get to play the Doctor again on screen. I know he came back in Night of the Doctor, but I mean between 96 and 2005. It's such a shame we didn't see him again, except on audio, but that's not the same, is it really? Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave it a like, and also if you didn't like it, also leave a like. Subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm going to be starting with Rose tonight, and uh, hopefully my views on the new series will change a little bit. But until then, I'll see you later. Where am I? Who am I? Who am I?